Paul McJones, and he's going to tell us about Lyft 2. Hi. Um, so this talk is sort of a, the exact opposite of, the, of Ron's talk. Um, it, Lisp 2 was a Lisp system that was done about 50 years ago, was kind of finishing up 50 years ago this year. Um, and I just thought there's a few interesting aspects sort of about the whole context of the talk, of, of the system that might be interesting to you. Um, so, let's see. I guess for, what, about 30 years there's been common Lisp and fairly standardized versions of schemes, so the world has been pretty stable and pretty performant and useful. Um, but Lisp really began, you probably remember, around 1959, 1960 was when the first Lisp 1 was coming into existence. And it ran on an IBM 704 that used gadgets like this, vacuum tubes. Um, this is sort of the equivalent of two transistors, half a flip-flop, and it's about the same volume as Ron's entire computer, which is roughly as powerful as a 704, probably a lot faster, actually. Less memory, but probably a much faster processor. The 704, well, I'll get to that in a second. So this two came along a few years after that. There was an attempt to well, what had happened with the original few LISPs, um, the first few were done by MIT people um, under, under McCarthy's leadership, and those were ported to a few other military machines and so on. Um, a young high school student named Peter Deutsch came along and did a LISP for the PDP-1, so that had a four kiloword um, address space, 18-bit word, so eight kilobytes. So and it was a pretty stripped down list. Um, and then some other things, I'll kind of come back to those, came along a little bit later. But so the setting, it's, it's the mid 60s and um, Lisp is showing promise. Everybody who gets to spend some time with it finds it very interesting, but it's, you have to have access typically to an IBM 709, 7090, big expensive computer that, um, so, also, Lisp had some issues. John McCarthy himself didn't really like S expressions as, as the source language. Um, he was always writing in so-called M expressions, which looked a little bit more mathematical, had, had some infix and so on. Um, and the original Lisp had rotten numeric support. You would not write elliptic curve cryptography in it. And it had very poor array support, almost no array support. And the garbage collector didn't really know about blocks of storage. So once you'd allocate it, an array, you know, it was there for all time. Um, so they started talking about this project list too. And it was really McCarthy and I think um, Marvin Minsky were, were proponents for this. Let's really do something Lisp 2, you know, this one, one, we don't want to do this incremental stuff, 1.5, 1.55, which they'd been doing. Let's jump clear up to two. Um, so they um, convinced ARPA to spend some money, and back to this thing on the left, that was the front panel of this spare computer called the Q32 that had originally, it was going to be a follow-on for the SAGE computers, which were for a big air defense system that really was built and deployed around the country using vacuum tube computers, 1950s technology, and that stayed in existence until around 1980, was designed to help track Russian bombers coming over the pole. And luckily, they never needed to use it. Um, so this was a solid state machine that had an 18-bit address space, so it's starting to be sort of respectable, and very impressive machine. Um, so they did build a system I've got only five minutes here, so I need to keep this short. I'm not going to show you any of the source code or anything. Some of the interesting properties of it were that it had an algal-like, um, in other words, uh, infix statement-oriented syntax as an option with blocks, begin, end, and, and it had a type system. It had um, numeric types and array types and, of course, symbolic S expressions. And so you would, you would declare a variable, and, and the compiler could, could, could generate more efficient code for numeric code. So a team of people who, most of whom had never done LISP before, um, put this together. Luckily, they had some, some good leadership. Some of um, McCarthy's original graduate students were involved at the beginning, and a guy named Lowell Hawkinson, who later went on to um, 
do a lot of work at MIT and um, List Machines Incorporated, was the original sort of the lead programmer of the team. Well, five minutes, but I'm going to ask the first question, which is what were you going to say next? <laughs> We have a five-minute uh, lightning talk and then five-minute questions afterwards. Okay. <laughs> well, so they built a system. It was too big to fit on that machine when they went to do the systems integration, and they basically stopped. And so what happened instead was BB and N Lisp, Mac Lisp, Stanford Lisp 1.6 all came along at about that same time. They ran on PDP 10s, which had the same, roughly the same address space. They didn't have infix syntax and type declarations, but they gradually got good numeric support. And so that's, that was the wave of, of the 70s until common list. So. so. I'll sneak in one more question. Oh, were you involved? How, how did you... No, I'm, I, at that time, I was just learning to program you know, a little assembly language in 4chan and didn't learn list for a few more years. My interest is, I'm kind of interested in the history of Lisp. I've done a lot of work in conjunction with Computer History Museum. I've got a website. Well, that's what I should. So I didn't even do the rest of my slides there. But oops. Um, would would there be a way to put the slides someplace after the talk? Okay. Um, play. Great. Um, so. Um, the middle reference cites an archive of just about every document that, that there was for this project um, and the source code as listings. Um, the, the third reference is sort of a short paper I wrote. I actually, I, several of the project people, most of the project people are still alive. I, I interviewed several of them and looked at the documents, wrote, wrote a short informal paper about it. Um, and the first one was their paper 50 years ago. Um, it's open access, even though it's at IEEE. And you can read the way they viewed the system just, just as it was coming together. Um, are, are there any ideas um, that were first over here in this two that have survived on into uh, the modern dialects? I think one way or the other, every, you know, every, pretty much every idea they had is in some modern system or another. But in some sense, it was kind of an evolutionary offshoot. You know, they, it, it wasn't really done at an AI lab by people who were living and breathing Lisp. It was this funny command performance. It was done at SDC, which was originally, it was a nonprofit spinoff from RAND built to, to, to build big software for the military. And, and it, they, they were sort of hired guns. And so they, they built something by the spec. Sounded good, but it wasn't what, what people really turned out to need at the time. Physically, where was this done? What city? Pardon? What city was this done? Um, System Development Corporation is, I think, San, was Santa Monica. Um, again, it was a spinoff from RAND from sort of the mid-50s. OK, well, oh, one other thing, unrelated. I have one. I did this a few years ago, a spare manual for portable standard list, which was early 80s. It was the system built for reduce, the symbolic math system. And this is available for anybody who'd like to have it. It's just belonged to Beryl Nelson, who was a longtime Digital Equipment Corporation software engineer. And sadly, she died recently. And this is one of the last things. Most of her stuff went to the Computer History Museum.